more on the planet with a different spin. How about that? That uh, was pretty good. We'll be back. And what a couple great hours we've got in store for you. Mark Sargent joins us in a moment. We're going to be talking about the enclosed earth theory and some other incredible theories in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you. Let me tell you about our guest. Mark Sargent started his career playing computer games professionally. I've got to ask him about that. And from there, he spent the next 20 years troubleshooting, helping to train people in proprietary software. And back around 2014, he looked into what is no doubt uh, the very strange conspiracy theories uh, called the flat earth theory as well. And through extensive research, he discovered that it wasn't as laughable as people think. So we'll talk about that, too. Early in 2015, he released a series of YouTube videos titled Flat Earth Clues, which really delves into the possibility that our human civilization is inside its own Truman-type show, like an enclosed system. And here he is on Coast to Coast, Mark Sargent. Hey, Mark, how are you? Hey, George. Thanks very much for having me, man. I'm looking forward to this. Now, tell me, what is a professional computer game player what is that <laughs> you're right there's there's not a lot of those guys out there uh and when i was doing it there was very few of us uh for me when i was hired on as a, as a ringer as a professional uh computer game player i basically went to the conventions and i was the guy that represented the game so i would play the game live on the screens and since i was you know pretty good at it after you know playing it day in and day out i made the game seem a lot better than they were <laughs> and uh, that was a lot of fun. Did that for three years. It was a blast. Went to Macworld and E3 and, and just showed off all the time. These these games are getting so sophisticated uh, and so lifelike. Uh, there was a story that came out just a few days ago, Mark. I want to get your reaction to that. That said, sure. young kids, if they play video games extensively, uh, and you know they cited a few, could develop brain problems later on in life that their brain literally forms in different ways wouldn't wouldn't surprise me at all really yeah. oh no no because I, I never stopped playing games uh which is how kind of you know i got into this and you know you combine you combine the realism of the games now uh, you know the immersive uh, effect of the games combine that with the movies that that simulate games you know games or uh, movies like the matrix uh, or the thirteenth floor that put the idea that you know not only are, could you be playing you know an immersive game but you could be in an immersive game absolutely it could affect you psychologically no no doubt in my mind and you know we we know through some tests for example in Japan uh, some kids were watching uh, cartoons and special video games mm-hmm. and there was a kind of flicker on there and and it was almost if as if they were in a trance. Yeah, I, I, I could I could absolutely see that. It's we've got our technology has gotten to the point where it, we're, we're you know this we're we're only one step away from some sort of hologram you know uh, type helmet or you know piping directly into the cerebral cortex. And yes. When, once you do that, then 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 everything blurs, and then it get, you know then this discussion you know turns turns a whole different way. And then you see marketing uh, programs like uh, Game of War, which. Yep. They got to be spending a fortune with Katie Upton, and and the promotion they're doing. What are they What are they trying to do? Sell the games, or just get people to use them? Uh, good, good point. It's it's a little of both. Uh, at this point, yeah, all all lines start to blur in that case. Yeah, using using, using Kate Upton, of course, you know, to to push the sex angle, That's right. which which of course you know hits that demographic right on the head, and and then you're getting into a whole another level of positive reinforcement. But uh, they know what they're doing, don't they? Yeah, they do. We've gotten a lot better at this stuff than we used to be. So let's talk now about this transition from you as a professional game player yeah. to what you did in the software industry. And then all of a sudden, you started looking at the flat earth theory. How did that happen? Uh, you know, I was looking, I, I was kind of a conspiracy guy anyway. So I looked at a whole bunch, being, being as open-minded as I was, I looked at just about every conspiracy, and this one crossed my desk, uh, like I'm sure it's crossed yours over the years, but it's like you just pass it by, and it's like, oh, that, that piece of junk, you know, that, yeah. that thing's horrible. And I had gone through enough conspiracies to where I finally said, you know what, I'm just going to look at this thing and debunk it. I'm, I'm just going to get it out, out, of my, uh, you know, out of my field of vision and just go through it. 
And I thought I could tear through it in like a weekend. And I spent the next nine months, you know, the, the better part of 2014, looking at this and then kept banging my head on the desk because there were so many loose ends, so many loose threads that uh, then, you know, February of this year, all of a sudden I woke up with this Jerry Maguire moment of clarity. <laughs> and, and just, you know what, I've got the whole freaking narrative in my head and started cranking out these videos and, and, and didn't really think even much of it. You know, it's like, okay, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm going to propose the theory that we're in an enclosed world, you know, Truman Show type thing. And it just started gaining traction to the point where, I mean, I, I, I just put up my website like five days ago. We're going to crash it tonight. You know that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Watch. <the> providers ready. <laughs> we will unloose our, our, our people. Yeah. We, we will yeah. do that. So in your opinion, the yeah. theory at the time, the flat earth theory, mm-hmm. was what? Ridiculous. It was it was ludicrous. The, the, it was it was antiquated. You know, it, take your take your pick. It was was it a combination of an, antiquated religious belief, or was it just you know part of you know a very fringe part of the tin hat crowd? Because yeah. as you know, in, in conspiracy circles, this is one of those topics that even conspiracy guys don't touch because it's just so we're we're so ingrained into it. And uh, and I I was one of those guys. I mean, it was this was literally right in front of my face 15 years ago. Uh, when I noticed, you know, the just total absence of the pictures of Earth from space, and and it, I still couldn't see the the forest for the trees. And we've and, all seen those pictures, those gorgeous pictures of a somewhat round planet, a perfectly you know. round planet, depending on <laughs> where you go. With yeah, you know the period. oceans and the clouds, and I mean it's just gorgeous. I don't see anything flat about that at all. No, no, nothing, nothing flat about that at all. With the ex- yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But the question came down to me. I mean, there were a couple things that, that I dug into, and I really kind of started off rumor because there was a, a video that a German guy had, had, had put on YouTube, and it wasn't in English, so I had to kind of translate it. But I kind of got the idea. He initially had said that, uh, hey, there's, the flights in the Southern Hemisphere are wrong. There's something going on. Anytime you try to get a flight in the Southern Hemisphere, there's all these weird connections, and they don't make any sense. And I go, okay, okay, that's, that's one thing. And then there was another guy um, uh, who, who goes on the YouTube uh, handle, the NASA channel. Uh, his name is Matt Boylan, who put a story out there, and, and I, I bought it hook, line, and sinker and said that he was an artist that used to work for NASA. And he was told, uh, you know, when he was in his 20s uh, at, a, at a, an elite NASA party that, he, that they said, look, the, the Earth isn't shaped what you think it's shaped, Led. and. I really do, and I didn't believe it at first. I looked at that story and I was like, I can, I can get through this thing, and sure. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do it. After, after all that research, finally, I got to the point where now I was doing history, saying, okay, when did it become a globe? You know, for most of our history, uh-huh. uh, you know, the first forty five hundred years of our history, every tribe, every culture. Every religion thought it was some sort of flattish, enclosed system. Something happened. And then, yeah, 500 years ago, uh, you know, Copernicus, you know, sort of led the charge on that. And, uh, and then it became a globe. And, but the, but the, there was a problem, and that's where, you know, the clues started, where there was no way to technologically to prove it. And so they put the globe model out there in, you know, the mid-1500s, but, you know, the first balloons to carry people uh, didn't come along until 200 years later. That was 1700. Still couldn't get high enough. First planes around 1900. Cabin, uh, you know, um, pressurized cabins didn't come along until, you know, sometime after that. So the question then became if the space, pro- you know, if the rocket program between Russia and America didn't crank up until about 1957, let's say they went up there. And they had the ability to take the picture, you know, finally of the Earth. Well, let's say it didn't look exactly like you thought it would. Would they tell anybody? Hmm. And everything that I was researching said no. They absolutely wouldn't tell They anybody. would not. Well, we no. know they won't tell us about UFOs and those no. kinds of sightings. We know yeah. that. Yeah. Now tell us about the enclosed world model. What is that theory? The enclosed world model is a little different from, and which is why I've, I've been sort of ostracized by the, by the pure flat earth movements. You know, there's, there's several flat earth, official quote unquote flat earth groups out there that have given me a hard time because I've sort of, mo- I've, I've changed the model a little bit to account for things. But basically what I'm saying is, if anyone, and, and here's, here's the easy version for those, you know, because this seems to... Because to, to, people are shaking their heads still. Yeah, are. I know. <laughs> I yeah. know. Believe me. 
the, the easiest version is if you can think of The Truman Show, which is, you know, everybody knows that movie, you know, from 1998, uh, Jim Carrey, where he was born into a giant Hollywood simulation, like a giant planetarium that was about 20 miles wide, and he was fooled the entire time, and only through a series of, of, of production mistakes did he figure out that he was actually inside a dome structure. Well, imagine if the Truman Show was thousands of miles wide. Because once you, get, once you scale it up that far, thousands of miles wide and hundreds of miles high, then weather systems become easy. You can mm-hmm. fly commercial airliners. Basically, you can fool an entire civilization if you wanted to. And when, yeah, when a civilization got to a certain point, someone's going to figure out the edge, of either the outside edge or the upper edge. But the question is, once the authority finds out, you know, whoever it is, find out, do they tell the public? And that's where I was rolling with this. Uh, so for me, it is, is no, no, no doubt in my mind, an enclosed Truman Show structure that is thousands of miles wide with some absolutely ingenious design features that, uh, that has kept the, the population, 99.9% of the population, uh, completely oblivious to it. Are we in an enclosure? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, I am. Who, yeah, I, I'm saying that we who are Who encapsulized in, us? I'm sorry, what? Who encapsulized us? Uh, that's the question, isn't it? it the, the, whoever built it, and... And, and, you know, and it's huge. It's got to be huge. It, it's massive. It, yeah, it would be literally thousands of miles hop wide, and minimum, you know, because people have asked me that over the, the months, uh, at least 400 miles high. The advanced technology involved would be staggering. But at the same time, you know, it could be, you know, some people say, well, you know, is it a, a divine structure? It's like, well... Maybe it's divine, but, you know, I don't want to necessarily get into the definition of God, but there is some, you know, we, if, if aliens are involved, then absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, they, they could be it, part of it, which changes their whole definition. Is it a hologram? Or is it, it, or is it solid? It, I, it, I it, ask you that because, you oh, know... Oh, we, you mean the, 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 the barrier itself? Yeah. I think it's fairly solid. I mean, how did we get out of it? To get to the moon, uh-huh. <laughs> well, that go that comes into question, and that is, could it is is it possible to get out of it? And that's why well, I dug into some 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 pretty controversial clues at that point. I said, look, if this thing is solid, then the moon was not what we think it was. You know, the the, the entire mission program was, you know, lack of a better word, staged. Uh, because it had to. I mean, think look, look at look at the stuff that happened uh, when the the supposed outer edge was found. In my opinion, in 1956, you know, the rocket program started up in 1957 between Russia and America. Uh, atomic testing, uh, high altitude atomic testing, took place in 1958. Both the Russians and the Americans were firing uh, big big time atomic weapons uh, straight up for no apparent reason. Were firing for four years. As soon as they were firing those things off, NASA was formed in 1958. Um, for, you know, coincidentally, 1959, NASA announces the Van Allen radiation belts, which supposedly you can't get through without dying of radiation poisoning. And at the same time, they seal off Antarctica. N- NASA didn't do that, but all the governments of the world did. And to this date, no one, is, no corporation in the world is allowed to do anything in Antarctica. And I, I, and I thought for a moment my executive producer was trying to pull a fast one over me to, when, when, <laughs> when she had you booked and she said we're going to talk about you know the the flat earth theory and yeah. and you know the planet uh, and you know here george here's your research go go for it i, I thought it was a, a gag i i thought it was too i on, honestly when when i looked at it i never ever thought you know because people say why are you doing this i'm going look i'm i'm not doing this because because I'm 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 looking to uh, to get famous or anything. I mean, I honestly I honestly believe this, but it's only because I can't prove the other side of it. I've gotten to the point now where show you know I, I go to people. It's like oh, show me it's a globe. Tell me tell me how you know it's a globe. And their first reaction, everybody's first reaction is, well, we just know. It's 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 assumed. It's like a mathematical given in algebra. And I go, okay, is it because you had a globe in your classroom in first grade? Or is it because NASA gave you a picture that, that, you know, the first picture they released was either 1969 or 1972, depending on when you look, you know, some t- people say it was Apollo 17, some people say it was a little bit earlier. But there are so few NASA pictures from space. 
And if there are tons and tons of satellites, and if there's tons and tons of missions, then why aren't there more pictures? Why are all, when you look up, when you Google the Earth from space, why are they all composite images? Why, when you, go, when you did this 10 years ago, even up until, yeah, say 2003, 2004, why was there only one? Well, let me ask you this, Mark, because when, yeah. when, there, there's going to be a million questions. Oh, I bet. We're with I Mark Sargent. And, and one, by the way, I can't figure out how you're making any money doing this. I, I haven't made a dime. All right. So <laughs> there's, there's no profit motive here. That, no, so no, I, I am not. I am not selling anything. I'm not even selling T-shirts. On it. I mean, literally, <laughs> my website is five days old. All right, when when you're looking out into we think space now. Now I'm going to even doubt whether we have space. But when you're looking out into the sky at night and you yep. see the moon and the stars, and through your telescope you can see Jupiter and Saturn's rings. Uh-huh. What are we looking at? You're looking at a beautifully rendered fantastically well done image for for the most part when it comes to now there's there's two parts of that uh the stars and the planets anything supposedly you know at at or you know deep orbit that in my opinion is no different than a than a giant planetarium no no different the sun and the moon however and and even the the flat earth societies will will, will dig into this one um but the sun and the moon are completely different because they would be actual three-dimensional objects that are actually floating over the top, uh, you know, inside the structure. Inside like, the dome. Yeah, like a, like a mobile, like a child's mobile, you know, that, that you put over cribs. Uh, not as big as we think it is, then. Not obviously. near, no, my, no, Lord, no. Uh, I mean, if the sun, was, the sun's definitely not 92 million miles away and the, earth, and the moon's not 237,000 miles away. They're both... Now, we do have, are you saying we don't even have a sun? 92 million miles. Well, no, we do have a sun. I absolutely do think it's a three-dimensional object, and I do think it's inside the structure. And I, for me, though, it's, and I hate to diminish it too, too much, and this I, does not affect anybody in the, that's looking at it from a creation standpoint. It's a big, giant light bulb in, in the inside of a, of a planetarium. So we're going to get into who you think made this. Okay. Because it obviously was constructed. Yeah. Well, now, let's talk a little bit about Admiral Byrd and for the few minutes we've got before the break. Okay. Did he find the edge of what this planet was supposed to be initially? I think he did. Uh, and, and the reason I say this is, is two parts. Uh, the first part was, and, and you, you, we'll see if we dig into that later, was most people know Admiral Byrd for the hollow earth theory. Right. Because he, in 1926, you know, everybody knows he went to the North Pole and back, you know, because he, he flew all his own missions. Uh, but everyone also knows in the conspiracy circles that he supposedly, you know, if you look at his diaries or whatever documentation's out there, that he went into, supposedly, into the hollow earth and, and found something. But after 1926, he, most people don't know, he spent the rest of his life down at the Antarctic. And he looked. He did. And, yeah, and he just kept doing mission after mission, and they got bigger and bigger. You know, they started in 1928. Uh, they peaked really in 1946 with Operation High Jump, which you know delves into that whole you know did the Nazi you know part of the Nazi force you know escape to Antarctica. But it looked like he was looking for something for 30 years, from 1928 all the way up to 1956. Uh, and 1955 was the last official mission down there for the Americans, which was Operation Deep Freeze, and. In 1954, as a matter of fact, he goes on television. You guys can look this up on YouTube. It's one of the clues I've got it edited where he goes on, on CBS and tells everybody, he's like, oh, yeah, Antarctica is made out of money. It's got you know, an entire mountain range made out of coal. There's oil. There's minerals. There's uranium. Sure is. And, and everybody's geared up for it. And then whatever they found in, in Operation Deep Freeze spooked them so badly that everyone left the ice at once. They put a treaty in place in 1959 that said no one gets to go there ever for anything. Mark, and- stay uh, stay with us. We're going to come back and talk more about this. Wow. We'll be back. Now, don't wait too late in Vancouver. You know, they do sell a lot of walk-in tickets, but uh, we want you to get good seats. So whether you're in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Bellingham, Washington, Seattle area, or coming from anywhere... Just go to our website, coasttocoastam.com, and click the events there, and then uh, track me in Vancouver. That's coming up in just a couple weeks, so I'd love to see you uh, out there. Welcome back. Back with Mark Sargent and his incredible theory. What he's done is he's taken the flat earth theory 
and he's pushed it a little bit further than that. Mark, other do, are are there others who accept this theory that we're talking about, and that's this enclosed Earth theory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but no official organized group yet. Uh, you know the 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 flat Earth the flat Earth Society and the International Flat Earth Research Society, and then the Serendipitous Boards dot net. They've all got their own slightly different takes on it, but uh, but yeah, the acceptance has been again way more positive than I I would have imagined, which is you know why why we're talking. Well, right, here's here's the sixty four thousand dollar question. Sure. Why enclose the planet? What's its, what's the purpose? Why enclose it? Several reasons why you can close it. Uh, the first one would be even sorry, why why is it built? The big reason for me would be some sort, a combination of an ed- education system, uh, coupled with some sort of perspective recharge. Meaning, let's say, because well, the the next question after that would be, what's outside of it? You know, if 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 we are enclosed, if we are sealed into this thing, you know, like a giant petri dish or snow yeah, globe, and we're, and what we see are merely pictures or images. Let's exactly. Say. Yeah. If you're in a giant planetarium, then what's outside of that planetarium? And for 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 me, I, you know, I try to take the optimist. I try not to do the whole sinister matrix take on it. And that is, there's some sort of unlimited dimension outside of it, some some higher frequency, something something that's way better than this is. And the only way that we can appreciate it is to be inside here. So what I've been throwing at people lately is like, look, yeah, the, the inside this world, you know, it's not real great. You know, a lot of people suffer, and there's a lot of misery here, but wouldn't it be something if you actually volunteered for it? You know, you, you signed the waiver, you paid your ticket, you got in the amusement park ride, and you went, you know, went in. But, of course, the, the, the caveat to that would be is that you, you would have to have some sort of temporary amnesia to come in here. Okay, but again, why build this thing? Why, why build, assuming the planet is flat, yeah. why, why, in, why seal it in? Why seal it in? Oh, 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 geez, that's easy. <laughs> In a, in a situation like this, because there are other people, absolutely. Uh, Matt Boylan from the NASA Channel is real big on saying that you know this is part of a, a bigger system, you know, like a like an egg carton, you know, where there's more worlds besides this one outside, and, and there's a much flatter system. And he said, well, you know, it shouldn't be sealed in. But for me, it's like, look, our civilization, as as advanced as we are, you do not want any sort of cross contamination. Uh, you know, not, I'm not trying to diminish this that much necessarily, but you know, you don't want a group like us running amok. You know, some science fiction movies have touched on this, you know, as far as a solar system model. But you don't want groups like us running amok into other worlds and messing things up because, you know, we have a tendency to uh, to do some damage. So are you saying that, and we'll get into this in terms of who, yep. but are you saying that we were enclosed to basically keep us in? Yeah, you know, I, again, I don't like to use the word prison planet, and the reason why I don't like, you know, because people say, well, we're trapped. You know, we're in, we're in a cage. And I say, yeah, but is it really a cage if you hide the bars? You know, if you make it like a holodeck. And or, if, and uh, if or you don't know you're in a cage. Yeah, if you don't know you're in a cage, which is why the globe model had to be introduced eventually. You know, people say, well, you know, is, you know the, the authority, you know, the ruling, you know, the, the rich or the royalty or whoever run, whatever secret society, they were the ones that promoted the globe. I'm going, no. You know, not really, because the builders themselves would also want the globe model at some point. Because if you tell people it's a globe, they don't look for the edge anymore. And that's exactly what happened. You know, people now, it's like, you know, when, if, if there's no outer edge, it, because it's a, a sphere, you can just go round and round and, and you'll never, you're never going to hit it, then nobody even bothers trying. But if you let people know that you continue the thing, oh yeah, by the way, it's an enclosed, flattish structure, then by the 16, 1700s, the expeditions just get more and more frequent, and then you've got everybody going out there, and then everybody, you know, still, once they find the edge, then society changes. Well, now, at this point, when you get to the edge, yeah. let, let's assume we're enclosed, but yep. when you get to the edge... Do you see the kind of roundness of the sphere that has enclosed us when you're right there at the edge? That's that's the big question. And if Admiral Byrd ran into that in 1955, 1956, I would think, like any simulation, again, coming from the gaming world, if you get close enough to it, that's why I think that I think they figured out at one point. So you get up to it, and it's like, okay, you're massively huge, right? 
and you can see sort of a dimension, you know, maybe sort of semi-transparent, mm-hmm. you know, there may be a projection. So you, 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 know, you look to the left, you look to the right, and then eventually when you look up high enough, you may start to see some sort of arc, you know, some sort of curve. The curvature of it. And which right. is why, in my opinion, the rocket program, you know, between Russia and America was so, so accelerated. You know, they immediately left the ice, and the first thing they do, it's like, oh, yeah, we're doing the rocket program. And then with less than a year after that, it's like, oh, yeah, let's put, let's put nukes on the top of them and just start firing these big shots for no apparent reason. And they, fire, and they shot those things off for four years straight uh, and then finally concluded in 1962. Both stopped at the exact same time. And some people say, well, it was a moratorium. I was going, no, it's because they gave up. They couldn't, they couldn't get through it. Is, is the sphere solid? Or is it uh, something like an image that looks like it's round? You mean the 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 dome itself? The dome itself, yeah. Is it a I, physical I dome, think... or or maybe it's just almost like a painting? Uh, it depends because if you're using any sort of holographics, you can do both. So you could have like you could have a solid structure up above, and say made out of a heavy element uh, that, that we don't know about yet. That, that's resistant, in fact, impervious to atomic weapons. But you could also project from the other side of it in, you know, using a, a combination of 2D and 3D technology to create the stars, you know, the, the tapestry. You know, it, again, an advanced planetarium outside of the structure. You could do both in the same, in the same instance. How do you explain, like, meteorites? Oh, so Shooting glad. stars. So glad you asked that, because people have been emailing me that nonstop for three months. Meteorites and shooting stars, if the meteorite is getting into the atmosphere, that is one of the easiest things to do from, from an enclosed system because you just introduce it, and that wouldn't be us. You know, that wouldn't be like a harp or a CERN thing. Uh, you know, that would be the builders themselves introducing a piece of metal ore at speed you know, and letting the friction of the atmosphere mm-hmm. do the rest and, and just make sure you, you don't get close to any population centers, which is why that Russian thing a couple of years ago got a little dicey. That was scary, yeah. But... But 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 they're they're real. If when we oh when yeah 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 no question they're real. But it, it's not hard to do. I mean if the if the structure is real, if the enclosed world is tr- real, then throwing a couple rocks in pff, that's easy. All right. In your opinion, though, is yeah. this is this a physical dome or is it a uh, something solid or is it an illusion type thing? I think it's physical. Okay. So and, and I and I think that any sort of alien technology has the ability to either phase through it or 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 just blink through it. What, what, one way or the other. So I absolutely do think it's, it's solid just because if I was going to design it, again, from a, a gaming design standpoint, yeah. I stared at this thing for months, and everything that I saw, I said, look, you, you cannot let the, you know, you've got to make it a, an enclosed, solid system. What kind of material do you think it is? Super dense, heavy elements. Some people have suggested a heavy water that, that we don't know about, you know, because, you know, then you get into that whole firmament water, you know, separating the waters from the waters from Genesis. Um, I think it's a heavy element. But, I mean, but, again, it could be, you know, a very, very dense force field. You know, there's, there's different ways you, you could look at it. There's, it. there's different ways you could go. But for me, probably I, I would go with a more solid structure. There, therefore, you wouldn't have to rely too much on the energy side of things. This fascinates me, Mark. Oh, God. But, and part of me thinks you're insane. I the, know. Uh, the other part thinks, hey, you know what? Well, <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about this. <laughs> now, are you saying we did or did not go to the moon? I am saying if this system is what I think it is, we couldn't have gone to the moon. We but did. I, I, will, I will add a rider to that. And that is, it answered for me a question that was burning in my head for a, a number of years when it came, you know, because everybody knows the moon conspiracy side of things. But, but it really bugged me that I couldn't come up with a motivation for it because it's like you, the, the old argument is why, in the, why, why would you fake any of the Apollo stuff? And, it could, and nothing I came up with worked. And then when I dug into this as a side effect of it, it, it all of a sudden occurred to me. It's like, oh, of course, because it's not that they wanted to fake the, the Apollo missions. They had to. They absolutely had to. They had to militarize space. Because of the Soviets? No. No, no, no. No, no, no. The Soviets, in my opinion, the Soviets were in on it from day one because they were huh. down on the ice with the Americans during Operation Deep Freeze. In fact, there were six or seven nations. Uh, Great Britain was down there, New Zealand, um, uh, Australia, Chile. They were all down there. And I think the, the United States and the Americans uh, got together at that point, and they said, okay, look, we're going to, 
You know, we we got to fake everything at this point. But but the whole goal was, it's like, look, we can't let the private sector get high enough. And look how long that lasted. I mean, we had you know SpaceX and uh, the Virgin Airline thing. That only happened it's been what you know, less than ten years. Yeah, so yeah. they kept it going for decade after decade, and the goal worked, and 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 it was very successful. All right. Well, for the record, everybody knows I think we went to the moon, but now I'm beginning to wonder what the moon was. Huh? Well, if 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 anyone wants to know, and I, I I throw this in, this isn't necessarily my research, but if anyone wants to look into the moon itself, because it does fall into this model, just either go to YouTube or or Google this, Google lunar waves, because it is a fascinating take. There's a guy out there uh, that's taken some fantastic HD footage of the moon, and he shows. Again, I'm saying this from the gaming standpoint, what appears to be a resolution issue with the moon. And by that, I mean a display issue. There is something going on with that. And he, he caught on film and a whole bunch of other people have too. And so that, you know, and, and flat earthers get mad at me because I bring him up, but because he doesn't necessarily believe in the enclosed system. But he says, he goes, look, the moon is not what you think it is. Are you saying we're uh, 4.5 billion years old or 6,000 years old? Um, I think it's a little bit between both because the because in a system like this, you wouldn't want to. It's going to sound trite, but uh, you wouldn't want to waste a perfectly good dome on just one civilization. So, if the structure is built as well as I think it is, then you can use multiple civilizations that go that could go back at least hundreds of thousands of years. I mean, you know, the Atlantis civilization or the uh, you know, any, any others that have been talked about over, over time, but, you know, is it millions of years? Eh, maybe, but it's, it's, it's tough to say. I try to prefer to, to go from one civilization to the next. Mark, so, prior to the dome being built and constructed, yeah. what did the planet look like? It was all flat? I think, yes. I think the early versions, I think it was really, really close to, I mean, it, <laughs> When you're designing something like this, you're going to go through iterations. And the, the early, I mean, uh, think of uh, the Pangea continent, uh, you know, the big grouping. I think that would have been one of the earliest ones. And people have asked me, it's like, okay, who would some of the older civilizations have been over the years? And for me, it's like, oh, that's, that's an excellent question because are they even gone? Or is, is, could it possibly be that some of the alien civilizations that we strike as alien, could they be some of the previous tenants here? Because I guarantee we're not the first people to rent this apartment. And, you know, could there be remnants of them still around, and where would they hide? If they were going to hide anywhere, they'd hide underneath. If, you, if you were sailing on this flat earth, yep. would you go right over the edge? No. No, not, not a chance. Uh, and and that, that is the old, the old argument that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, no, and, and the biggest reason is because if the map is right, the, the Azimuthal map, then Antarctica is not just a continent at the bottom. It is literally stretched around the entire outside edge of this thing. Yeah, explain this, this map. This map, and people can look this up, and it's one of the clues. I think it was number three called the Map Makers. And basically there's a map uh, on, on Wikipedia called the Azimuthal, uh, A-Z-I-M-U-T-H-A-L, equidistant map. And this is the AE map, right? The, A, the AE map, and it is a very intriguing map because when I was and it was one of those things when I was kind of dug, digging into, I just found it, stumbled across it, and it's a map. It's a it's a map top down view of the world where the North Pole would be the, the the center of the map, and the Antarctic would would stretch around the outside. But what's interesting about that map is that the USGS uses that as their their current model in in their catalog of the world. And this map is a thousand years old. It was proposed by a, a Persian scientist named Al Biruni, and I was, I was looking at it. I was going, okay, what does this guy got to do with anything? And why are they using this this map? And I was thinking it's got to be a fluke, but that's not true because NASA actually has a moon crater named after Al Biruni. There is a crater called the Al Biruni crater, and I was going, okay, how is it? And then I, I look over. If you go over to Wiki, there's another map called the Flat Earth map. And that map is absolutely identical to the AE map, but they don't reference each other. They're not, they're not linkable. So the U.S. government can use the Flat Earth map, apparently, and it's perfectly legit. And the, uh, the Flat Earthers can use the very same map, but because they say it's literal, they're considered crazy. And to throw one more wrinkle into it, that map is also 
the exact model of the UN flag, if anyone's looked at oh, that's it. That's interesting. Uh, the, the UN flag is, is literally the AE map and the flat earth map, if you just superimpose it on top, uh, it's, that's it. But, the, but the, the United Nations map, which was, which was built in 1946, has one thing missing, and that is the United Nations flag doesn't have Antarctica on it. Which is really odd because you'd think that you know it's a giant continent and and uh, you know it's part of the world and why isn't it there? But instead they've got this giant you know set of wreaths around the outside of it, but they never explain it. It's like okay, where's Antarctica? Is it is it just representing the wreaths? Is it the outer circle? You never quite put it there, and since you couldn't fit it in, why'd you use that as your map? To enclose us, why keep it secret? What's the big deal? The big deal is this. Think of think of it this way, and I and I covered this in several clues. In fact, by the time I got to ten and eleven, it, it was it was really apparent to me. And that is, let's say you had been pushing the globe for five hundred years. You know, it's twenty generations, give or take. And all of a sudden, you release to the public that, oh yeah, by the way, we're in some sort of enclosed system. Because I firmly believe that in nineteen fifty six, you know, that's when the authorities, you know, at least the very least, the Russians and the Americans hmm. found out. Think about this. If everybody is looking for some sort of hint at or evidence of intelligent design, and all of a sudden you disclose a giant structure which holds us all, you're basically giving uh, – up until now, every, all the, the, the big five religions of the world have been looking for some sort of supernatural artifact that, that they can hold up and say, look, this is proof of intelligent design, a proof of God. And if this was, this was disclosed, Everyone, all the religions at the, ma- at the same time would get that. They, everyone would get their Holy Grail. Everyone would get their Ark of the Covenant. Basically, they'd get this giant object, which they would interpret as the handprint of God, and it would change the world instantly. Uh, and and every, a lot of things would shift spiritually, and the churches of the world would get a lot more power. And, yeah, it would take a while for the authority to recover from that and, and maybe adjust and adapt to it, but the knee-jerk response is like, oh, we're, we're not going down that road, you know, because uh, science would take a beating for a while, uh, and they'd take a severe one. Um, even in 1956, they would have. And not only that, because all the major religions of the world fought this for thousands of years, they would come back, and there would also be this potential knee-jerk response of, oh, yeah, we knew it all along. You know, I'll, I'll use the, the, you know, the, the one from Genesis, and that is, look, we, we knew it. It was, in, it was Genesis 1-7, talked about the firmament, you know, the, the barrier separating the waters from the waters. And there would be, you know, science again would, would take a hammering for a while. How long do you think it took to build this enclosure? <sighs> to, the enclosure itself, I don't think it would have taken that long. If you have the tech... To do it, it's it's not building the the enclosure itself that would have taken that long. I mean, yeah, it could have taken hundreds or even thousands of years potentially, but it's the internal systems, like anything. You know, building the shell that's that's on on any simulation that's that's fairly easy. All right, stay with us, Mark. More to come. Phone calls as well on Coast to Coast AM. Now we've got Mark Sargent this hour as we talk about his theory of an enclosed planet. We're going to come back and take your calls and continue chatting as well on Coast to Coast AM. Welcome back with Mark Sargent. We'll get your calls in a second here. Mark, what was the epiphany for you, the moment that you came up with the theory? Because this isn't something everybody would sit back and say, aha, the planet's been enclosed. (laughs) What happened? Uh, The big thing for me was was the Admiral Byrd uh, project. Uh, when When I was looking at him as deep as I was, when I got to the point where, which is why I put it in uh, clue two, the bird wall, I had, I had to, that was my turning point. Because once I saw the world events and how the governments acted after 1956, and, you know, the big thing was, you know, sealing off Antarctica. And, it's, and for me, it was like, okay, because everybody knows how the world works. We, we, we we're built off greed and power and, you know, lust for money. As like the petroleum industry can get in anywhere it wants, and yet, and so I was, I was expecting it's like, well, they should be petitioning every year to go in into, into Antarctica, and they're they're not even allowed to talk about it. And I was going, okay, what is bigger than money? And and that's when you know I was like, okay, I, I have pretty much all my dots lined up for me, and that's when I decided to move forward. Now, those that built the enclosure, could it have been the Anunnaki? Who, uh, oh, 
Oh those, yeah, those people. Absolutely, it could have been. You know, it, it, yeah, the, the, no, no question. I mean, they're the the biggest of of all the groups I've ever heard of, and uh, yeah, yeah, they could have an integral part of it. Now, is is this dome like a big balloon? Are we inside of a balloon? I don't think it's that high. You know, people said, well, you, I, I keep getting the questions like, how how high is it? Is it like a snow globe? And it's like, well, if it's thousands of miles wide. You don't need to have to have it really, really high it, to, to to be able to, to do anything with people because you know, like um, uh, commercial airliners cap out at uh, ten miles. You know, spy planes maybe twenty miles or so. So you don't need to have it thousands of miles high. I mean, there's some people to say, well, you know, it's got to be thousands of miles high. But for me, it's like a, a shallow sports stadium or a planetarium where it's you know hundreds of miles high. But that is really, really shallow compared to the width, which would be thousands. If we're in a dome. It would seem to me then that we're in an artificial atmosphere that has been created for us. Yeah, yeah, everything, everything would be artificial here. And I discussed that in, uh, I think it was Clue 6, um, depth perception, which is, you know, the jet stream is really no different than a, a giant air conditioning system. You've got the underwater conveyor system, which, <laughs> lack of a better term, would be like jets in a hot tub. You have the magma system underneath, which is which is really interesting because... Uh, you know, we've always described the core of the Earth that, you know, we've said, oh, you know, there's all these bands of, of how far go, how far down it goes, but we've only been able to drill commercially eight miles down. And after that, the drill bits stop overheat and stop working. So how are they even telling us the, the what the core of the Earth is if they can't even drill past eight miles, which is nothing in, as far as uh, distance goes? All right, now we go to the phones. John right. is in uh, Webster, Texas. Welcome to the program. Hey, John, go ahead. You'll be our first. Yes, uh, excellent discussion, George, and the gamer dude. Um, I think the answer lies in your song, sort of, in an interesting way, the mystery ship, but uh, ride Captain George. <laughs> but uh, I, I see an avenue out of this being hopelessly lost in some entity's uh, entertaining encapsulation of, of all this in a simulation, and I think that avenue reaches back to and beyond the philosophical foundations of computer science. If uh, we look at the, in cul- the culmination of the Enlightenment philosophy, it branches out in all directions, back to Aristotle, but also forward in natural law. In other words, if there is a real God, does he not govern final reality? So that would be an avenue out of the philosophical constructs of the uh, computer science uh, possibilities if we're imagining in this, if it's real, if persons matter, if we are tortured by some alien entity that's thousands of years beyond us, would not God step in and say, that's wrong, because we are on the foundation of what is good and what is right? And I think it reaches back to the rudiments of the Enlightenment philosophers. Thank you. All right, what do you think of that, Mark? I'm not sure God steps in. Uh, Well... If, you know, and that's a, that's a great point, because it could be the reason why this topic, for whatever reason, in 2015 is being talked about. Could it be that, yeah, the aliens, or, or whoever it is, who may be controlling the structure, maybe they're just controlling it from the inside, but the actual structure is a godlike structure, and maybe it is going to be revealed one day. You know, maybe that is the thing that people are talking about in all the prophecies and all the religions, that there's going to be some revealing of the actual perspective of where we are very possible when you tell your friends or family this theory of the enclosed earth what do they say to you uh initially (laughs) yeah uh you know i I get the standard reaction but i'm I'm a fairly eccentric guy anyway you know uh, no (laughs) so so they don't they're not completely surprised but at the same time like my mother who is you know a devout christian you know she she's looked into a lot of you know, the scripture uh, over the last, you know, few months and, and said, you know what, it's not a bad argument. And I, I said, hey, that's all I'm asking for. You know, I'm not, not necessarily trying to, you know, beat you over the head with it. I'm just saying that it, it could be possible. Now, when we send rovers to Mars and they send back pictures of Mars, yeah. are you saying that's not happening? Uh, I, I have serious doubts, very, very much serious doubts, because if it was happening, they would have to get through whatever this thing is. And I just don't have any faith in it at this point. I've, I've had, I've, I've had my, I've had to relook at a lot of anything that that we say that we send outside of our world. Uh, I've had to revisit. 
Well, oh, great let's deal. go to Hawaii. We're going to Oahu. Jason's turn. Hi, Jace. Oh, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, sure. I just had a question. I'm I'm trying to follow along here, but uh, I just had a couple questions. If you're claiming this is a two-dimensional, artificial, alternate reality that was created by some other race, intelligent race, like millions of years ahead of us. So uh, if they had all this technology, why would they make everything flat? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't they just go ahead and go with the physics we have of, uh, you know, gravity and uh, the solar system and how everything works and and all these satellites we launched? And uh, Well, I, I don't think, Jason, they made it flat. It was already flat. What they no, no, did. I, I, I know the question he's going with. All right, go and ahead. that is why... If you have advanced enough technology, then not, why not create a globe? Why not build a, a solar system like we perceive it? And Because I've gotten that question before. And here's the reason. The reason is, from a design standpoint, it is way more efficient to build it in a flattish, enclosed system and then simulate a solar system. Way, way, way easier. Uh, again, no different than a planetarium. You know, as long as the, the civilization, as long as the population buys into it, then that's what you go with. You, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you can simulate big, then you build small. But if you're, you know, but yeah, if you have unlimited power, then absolutely you can, you build the whole thing. But, you know, you, you try to stick within the, you try to stay consistent with, with the design features. Interesting take on all of this, I got to tell you, Mark. It's, <laughs> it is it's weird. Tell us about YouTube and where people can at least watch what you do. Oh, absolutely. Um, YouTube. You can either, in fact, you don't even have to do it. Go, do, go to YouTube and just Google "flat Earth clues," and it, it'll all show up. Or at the very least, you can go to enclosedworld.com. But uh, or if you're on YouTube, again, just type in the search "flat Earth clues." You don't even have to spell it right; it'll show up. We go to St. Louis. Hey, George. Welcome to the program. Good to have you with us. Good morning, George. Good morning, Mark. I, I, my, my original question was how do you get outside the system? And you're defining something in thermodynamics is known as a closed system. And then it occurred to me as, you know, as I was waiting, if you were to transport a whole civilization from one end of the universe to, to the other, and we're talking about thousands of generations that live and die, and, you know, there's a progression, obviously, as you're traveling through space. That's what I would do. I would build an environment, a spaceship, an artificial environment, and transport people, even entertain them with, you know, with the celestial uh, uh, diagrams that you talked about. That's exactly what I would do. They would never know that they were in flight for thousands of generations going from one end of the universe to the other. It'd be like a artificial. It would be an artificial environment inside a spaceship. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you happen to see uh, the last twenty minutes or the last scene of the movie The Signal that came out last year? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's exactly what he's talking about. You know, a, a giant. You know, you you take the you know, the people, you put them in a, a simulated thing, and as long again, as long as you can keep them from getting to the edge, they're not going to know. And uh, I I love the last twenty minutes of that movie. I thought it was great. Let's go to Mary in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, Mary. What do you think of all of this? I probably, most of my questions have been answered, but I still have one. And what would the purpose of this be, whether it be the Anunnaki that did it or God? What's the purpose? If, if it's the Anunnaki, I know what I would, why I would do it. And I put that in Clue 8, which was uh, called Creative Force, and that is... If you're an advanced civilization that, that's lived, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, the one thing you would probably prize more than anything else would be novelty. And that is you let a civilization develop because all every civilization has its own creative beginnings and offshoots. We're in a terrarium, aren't we? There you go. There you go. And, and everyone would develop slightly different. Think of all the different things we've created with the arts, you know, um, you know pictures, sculptures, music, dance, and literature. Those things are all novel with every civilization. So if you're an advanced civilization, that's why I would do it. Now, if you're talking God, oof, there's a whole different set of things you'd go there. Is it a test? You know, is it an education system? Is it a perspective system, you know, to where 
we're separated from God and then have to come back and we have to, you know, suffer here. There's a whole bunch of different ways you could go with this, but all of them, I think, are practical. Mark, we get lots of emails. Got one from a listener who said, George, attack him. <laughs> Crush him. <laughs> and that's fine. I get, I believe me, believe me, I know, I under, completely understand uh, there's, a, there's a certain group of people out there, and I'm not knocking you, that do not like their world being messed with. Out of all the conspiracies out there, you can talk about all your garden variety conspiracies all day, but this one is really kind of like the Matrix where Neo is first told about it, you know, where, where Lawrence Fishburne kind of tells him, oh, yeah, by the way, you're in the Matrix. Here's, here's how it breaks down. And he gets really, really upset. Totally understand that. Uh, again, I'm not trying to beat you over the head with it. I'm just saying, look, it's possible. You're, if you're happy with the globe, then stay with the globe. Don't even listen to me. But, you know, just understand that technological-wise, we're getting to a point now where we are really close to creating this sort of environment, at least digitally. Well, you know, I could attack you all night, but you'll never get your story out. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and 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 everybody has pretty much said the same thing. Every interview I have done, there's you know the the you'll get emails and and some calls that come in, and there'll be people that's like how you know how dare you you know how you know that you you're saying that the world isn't what I think it is. And it's like look, I'm just saying I'm coming from a from a design world where we're getting to that point now anyway. So we might as well start talking about it, which is, again, why, for whatever reason, in 2015, this topic, you know, last year we couldn't have talked about it. This year, for whatever reason, maybe it's a hundredth monkey effect, we're talking about it. Are you open to the fact that you could be wrong? Possibly, yeah. But if, but if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong because there's something else bigger that's being hidden that I haven't even seen, that, that, even, that it even dwarfs this. Because for me, everything that I've seen hints at a secret so huge this was the biggest thing that i could i could even visualize but yes absolutely it could be wrong sure i got no problem with that let's go to leonard columbus ohio first time caller hi leonard hello george hello mark hey leonard i'm a little nervous (laughs) (laughs) that's right uh, mark you mentioned something earlier about um, a person willing to come to this planet uh, voluntarily, and the memory being erased. Uh, could yep. you respond to that a little bit more, please? And I'll take yeah, my answer. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Imagine, oh. imagine this. So I'm going to use the amusement park uh, ride analogy, which is, you, you, say you're on a roller coaster. You know that it's, you know, it's, it's kind of scary, and there's parts you don't like about it, but you know you're on a roller coaster. Now, Matt, you know, like Space Mountain, if you've ever been to Disneyland or, some, or the Matterhorn or whatever. But imagine if you woke up on that roller coaster, and you had no idea how you got there. Let's say you had amnesia. That roller coaster takes on a completely different perspective. And by that, I mean you don't know if you're in danger or not. Now, the roller coaster operators know you're probably fine, but you're going you're gonna to treat this like life and death. So that's the only way a world like this can work, you know, as far as an enclosed system. Uh, you, you, are, you come here for... Again, it could be education system, could be entertainment, but you come here to get scared, to get stressed out, to get worried, and more importantly, to suffer to a, a lesser degree because you can't appreciate light without shadow, good without bad. You know, there, there can't be a hero without being a villain. So seeing, being in a world like this, you will appreciate what's outside it uh, much, much more. Frank is in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin now, and it's your turn. Go ahead, Frank. Hi, George. Hello, Franco. Uh, pleasure to talk to you fellas again. Uh, you know, this is a, a, it's all a matter of faith. Uh, Jesus said, uh, when I return, will I find faith in the land? Well, if God stepped in all the time and, uh, you know, wiped our, our uh, bloody noses all the time and uh, answered every question all the time, his book is full of questions and answers. It's a matter of faith. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll throw one more at you, and that is because I assume you believe in the second coming. Absolutely, the, the second coming. The you know very specific. The whole world gets to see the second coming at the same time. How is that possible on a globe? It's not, but it is very very possible in an enclosed system. In fact, it's exponentially easier. If something goes awry with, uh, let's say, its mechanical atmospheric system. Yeah. Do we all die? 
No, no. The, 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 the auto, for something like this, you'd want systems in place that could adjust for it. Now, that being said, like a, like a, like a car, you know, has different varying, you know, you have your vents, you have your air conditioning, you have your windows, you have your heated seats. But you can bring something in there to mess with it. So let's say, for example, HARP, <laughs> you know, the HARP system, yeah. is, has the potential of disrupting, uh, you know, some, some of the weather patterns. The system, like a stream, will try to counteract that. And, you know, I don't think any system can be – I mean, I think we can mess with it. I think we've gotten technologically to the point where we can disrupt the system to where we can actually harm ourselves. Do I think the actual system can do it? Nah, I don't think so. I think there's too many checks and balances in place. Mark, what if we're in an actual floating spaceship, Okay. this planet? Okay. Is that possible? Sure. Sure. I, I don't, the, the one, I try not to go down that path. It's my least favorite of all the situations. Because, right. You know, I, again, I love the end of um, uh, the signal where, where they had the floating spaceship because people say, well, is there space outside of here? I go, well, yeah, there could be space, but you don't need space. Again, if you're simulating it, it could just be part of a, a much bigger room uh, or you don't want to diminish it. It could be a snow globe on somebody's desk. But, but yeah, absolutely it could be space. And, and we could be being transported from one place to the next. Absolutely. What if we're merely in a computer program? You're an expert on software. Uh, what do you yeah, think? The Matrix. Well, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll use a Buckaroo Bonsai reference, and that is, you know, if, if the, the, the you know, protons and electrons and all the things that make up the solid parts of our body are only a quadrillionth of our actual mass, then yeah, if we're talking about matter, yes, we could be in a matrix inside of a holodeck, huh. inside of a terrarium, or whatever you want. That could be amazing. We're going to come back and take some final phone calls with Mark Sargent as we talk about his theory, and Enclosed Earth. He's got a website called enclosedworld.com. All right, my colleague Richard Serrett will be filling in for me tomorrow, as I whittle off a day off, but I'll be on a live for you Memorial Night on Monday. We'll have a live program for you. Okay, welcome back. Our final segment with Mark Sargent. Mark, uh, in some of the movies you see, and someone's been kidnapped, they want proof of life yeah. before they bring the ransom. Yeah. How about this? What's What has been your proof for you to come up with the theories that you've come up with? Ah, excellent. Excellent. Um, the proof is is out there, and I am going to try to find it one way or the other. Um, the only way you could really prove this uh, is to either solve the hollow Earth scenario, you know, you know, because that will that will also you know determine the the structure and shape of of the Earth, or to find the edge of the Antarctic Circle. So. For me, I, I, I came up with something because people are saying, well, you know, you should, you should go on the ice and, and see if you can cross Antarctica and all this stuff. I was going, no, there's a way easier way to, to prove this thing out. And that is you just take two boats, put them within binocular range of the Antarctic coastline, have one facing clockwise, the other facing counterclockwise, and have them just start taking off. Or you could do it with one boat and one plane, but two boats, you know, seems fairly easy. And if... Antarctica is, is what they say it is, then it should only be slightly bigger around than, say, Australia. So those two boats should meet each other within, say, a week, give or take. But if the Antarctic coastline is what the AE map or as a muffle map says it is, then those boats wouldn't meet each other for a very, very long time, you know, more like a month. And so you could probably quit after two weeks and then at that point say, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and plus, keeping... The reason why you want to keep within binocular range of the shoreline is because uh, that way you can bypass the GPS system and you can just go visually. Now, the planes that fly normally, uh -huh. and I'm on a lot of them, Yeah, can they go beyond? I mean, because are we talking about a false atmosphere, false space? Is, 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 it, is none of it real? I don't think any of it's real. Uh, it, it's far, but as far as the planes you're flying on, the the structure is so high that you don't even come close to reaching that. Uh, again, you know, commercial planes cap out at roughly you know ten miles or you know fifty thousand feet. Yeah. So uh, that's that's ten miles. If the, if the dome, you know, if the, if the structure caps out at say four hundred miles minimum, you're you're not getting anywhere anywhere near that thing. So everybody that's you know flying commercially, pff, they're perfectly fine.
All right, let's take the final calls. Jerry's truck driving in Arkansas. Hi, Jerry, go ahead. Hey, George. Hey, Bart. I hey, got Jerry. A simple question. I got a simple question and a comment. All right. How do you explain the sunrise uh, at a different time from the east coast to the west coast? And a comment is the way that everybody would see the second coming of God was TV. Everything's in real time now with computers, and everybody's got a phone. Good. A camera phone. Good. I I'll like take that. my answer off there. I enjoy your show. All right. Thanks a lot, Jerry. He's been on hold so long. He started in Arkansas. He's probably a, in Illinois by now. <laughs> to, to answer his uh, his first question about sunrise, sunrise. and sunsets, and actually that's a, that's a good one, because in my model, and this is the reason, one of the reasons why I choose not to use the tabletop flat, you know, flat as a coin model, and that is, uh, if anyone wants to look this up, look up uh, Orlando Ferguson's 1830 flat and stationary earth map, where he kind of shows it like more like shaped like a roulette table where kind of have a bulge in the center where the North Pole is. And that really, from, from an elegant standpoint, takes, takes the edge off the sunrise and sunset. Because I, I know where he's going on that. Because if you didn't do that, then you'd have to turn the sun into some sort of directional light. Because people ask that all the time, you know, what about time zones? And of course, like you were saying, everything's in real time now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great point. Good, good one. We go to Paul in Hilo, Hawaii. Hey, Paul, you're on the Big Island, and you are now on the air with us. Hey, yeah, hi, George. I like your show. Listen, uh, uh, one thing that I was going to say is that um, if you're saying that the Second Coming, uh, they can't see it around the globe, you're uh, kind of making God a small person because God can do anything. Uh, he can put it in our minds that this is the second coming. But then what you're talking about is the evil genius theory that uh, we are just a, a whitewash and he's evil genius is putting things in our minds as we go around. Now, I'm going to be a little bit critical now and say, you know, this what you're talking about we've heard before in many different ways, uh, the Hindu... Uh, you got to have suffering and pain to know goodness. I mean, you know, I, I don't hear anything new here. And, uh, um, you know, it, just the same stuff over and over again. Well, Mark, I think I have heard new stuff, and that's your dome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know where he's going from this. You know, from the spiritual side, yes, I, I am throwing in some, some of the old favorites, no question. But uh, but I am absolutely taking it to a whole new n- whole new chapter a here. Different right. level, yeah. A little level up above, as a matter yeah, of fact. There you go. I mean, it's hard to believe. I know it's strange. Yeah, it really is. I mean, where do you go next with this? Well, next with this, really, because I, when I again when I started this out, uh, I, there was no agenda. There was I, I didn't even have a website. I, I really didn't think people were going to react as positively as they, as they have. So at this point, though, when I got, by the time I got to Clue 11, you know, when I, you know Clue 10 was called Hiding God and, and Clue 11 was called Souls in the System, I pretty much set out at this point to create some sort of 100th monkey effect because this is the only conspiracy that I know of, out of all of them, that I dare anybody to, to find a different one, that can change the world for it to be a better place. Meaning, if this was revealed, if this was actually the case, we would not be feel so alone in the universe. We would be everything would become much more intimate. We'd all be in the same boat, and uh, and we would all treat each other a lot better than we're treating ourselves now. It's a strange planet. Maybe they want to contain us, Mark, because we're so hateful to everybody. Maybe, maybe, but I don't think we. I think we can get past that. I think once we, you know, once we are all in the same situation, I think a lot of that hate dissolves away, and and that's that that's that's the optimistic take I'm gonna I'm gonna go with. Let's go to Marina in uh, Placerville, California. Hello, Marina. Good morning to you. Hey guys. Good morning to yourself. Thanks. You. Um, I just had a couple questions. The first one that I called in about, I was wondering. Do you think that this could be some kind of um, protective layer? Like, say, for instance, if the universe existed in the star system that we think it exists in, could it be something to keep negative alien forces from being able to attack our planet until the citizens here are aware of their existence Hmm, and become an interstellar society? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely could work the other way around. And that is we could, uh, for the other side, again, I don't like to go down sinister paths. So, yeah, we could be shielded, you know, no different than the, the arc stories of old. You know, we, we could be, be protected from something else that, that we have, we're not even uh, remotely aware of. Absolutely. Could it be a shield to protect us from an asteroid? Ooh, that's a good one, too. Maybe yeah. they knew something was coming. Yeah, and so they sure. had to form this. And... Very, very, also very possible. I mean, you know, considering our civilization's only been around five thousand years, building a system like this, you know, we we haven't been here that long by comparison. So yeah, yeah, also possible. Bonnie in Bellevue, Washington. Hi, Bonnie. You're up with us. Hi. How are you guys doing? We are well. Good. Um, I was kind of thinking along the lines of the Bermuda Triangle and that maybe there's a, a tear somewhere in the, in the fabric, as it were, and all the ships and the planes that we attributed maybe getting lost in the Bermuda Triangle actually got through the dome somehow and are floating around on the other side. Ooh, all, yeah, that, that, that's excellent. I, I've gotten a few people to mention the, the triangle to me. And, yeah, I mean, or, or it could be, uh, there could be a mechanical flaw there to where, yeah, people, they just haven't fixed it yet because they haven't figured out exactly how. Very, very possible. Yeah. Look like at this. That. Wormholes are holes in the fabric of this enclosure. Ooh, that's sexy. I like that. What do you think? Yeah. And you go through it, and actually you're on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, are we trying to create man made holes to go through that using CERN? Well, now let me ask you this. Yeah. If what you see is artificial, yep. the moon, the planets, the stars, yep. what is beyond the enclosure? Uh, for me, again, there's so many, depending on what type of science fiction writer you are, you could go a whole different way with this. But for me, I think it's a much bigger place where uh, it's so much more advanced and so much more unlimited and so much more positive than we are now. I, I treat this as sort of like a, like a haunted house ride by comparison. Uh, so, so for me, what, whatever's on the outside, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be able to give it structure, but it, is, it, but it is a great, wonderful thing. We've got time for Don, truck driving in Iowa. Hi, Donald. You're up with us. Hi, George. Hey. Is that why maybe... Uh... The shield is uh, the UFOs come into the shield and they'll, they'll crash on Earth, like Roswell. Could be, could be. Could be. I, it's hard to say with the Roswell thing how how they got knocked down, but but yeah, very possible. And for me, I, you know, it it gives anybody that's flying a spaceship up there, if anyone's listening, uh, a whole new take because. They obviously, you know, because they could be maintenance at this point. They could be the superintendents. I mean, some of them could be the janitors for all we know. So, but but they're definitely still involved. This this structure does not change what they are. It just changes their relationship. James in Clinton, Oklahoma. Thanks for calling, James. Go ahead. Hey, you know the question I have. Hey, thanks for letting me me talk. The sure. Question thing. that I have is based on his model. Mm-hmm. How would the moon and the way that it has the tides coming in and out? How, oh, how that oh, happen? that's excellent one. Uh, and I've gotten that a few times uh, it, in this model the moon would have almost no effect on the tides whatsoever. Everything would be controlled from down below, which would be, again, from a design standpoint, way easier. You'd use some sort of, because we've been designing this in the gaming world for 20 years, something called a gravity well, which uses, uh, in a gaming sense, uh, like a molecular magnetism, uh, a magnet that can, that can affect anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be metal or ore. It can be organic. So uh, the tides are controlled by down below. Mark, what if we are... Part of a game. What if we're not real? It's very possible. Extremely We've possible. all been created. We, yeah. we could be wiped out just like that. But but at the same time, I, but we haven't up until now. And so for me, if it's a game, it's the greatest game ever created. It's, uh, it's the, the, most, the most wonderful, most detailed, most advanced thing ever. But yeah, very possible. In your opinion, is there a God? Yes. Yes. Now, will I will I name you know? Can I describe that God? No, I I, I can't. Did uh, did God play a part in this enclosure? Had to have, had to have. At the very least, uh, would have you know. The question is, you know, did God build it from a design, divine standpoint, or did he subcontract out? You know, or you know, did he guess hand over? You know, uh, you know, is another civilization 
between us and what we know as God. You know, also possible. It may be. Hey, Mark, thanks for being on the program. Appreciate oh, it. thank you very much for having me, man. His website's uh, linked up for you at coasttocoastam.com. Now, as I told you, I'm going to take tomorrow off, so this is kind of like my Friday. Uh, Richard Surrett, by the way, is going to be uh, manning the desk. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean Laudasur, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burles, and George Knapp, I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.